Take two. Yesterday I had a problem trying to upload my video, so I'm redoing my video. Um, I do want to uh, let people know my name is Emmanuel Barbie. I'm the founder and president of the Grassroots Community Activist Movement. Um, part of that movement is our media component, which is Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast, also known as the New Black Voices of Media. I'm reaching out to, at this point, um, our global African family. I need you all to step up. If you have family members from your country that reside in the United States, Canada, or Europe, please inform them about me. Encourage them to send me a friend request on Facebook, as well as for them to send me their email address so that way we can interact with each other and that will help get the ball rolling. Here in the United States, African Americans slash Black Americans are only 12% of the population. And within that 12%, we can't get along, unfortunately, because of this Willie Lynch mentality. Um, my film project is my last attempt to try to do something positive for my racial group here in America. If I don't have no support for that film project, then I'm unable to do my job. But um, I am determined to make sure that we raise the funds, 500,000. So that way I can reach out to um, a legitimate uh, production company. If black um, production companies don't wanna work with us, no problem, we'll reach out to non-black um, production companies. But bottom line, we're gonna get this thing taken care of and done. Um, and the proceeds is gonna be able to uh, let me know if we're gonna be able to carry out all the things which I have written or not. So I'm, I'm, I'm just believing it will. And again, um, the devil doesn't have more power than the Holy Spirit. He doesn't. It's just not gonna happen. And that's who I'm depending on and believing in. Um, help stop the genocide in American ghettos. This is not about entertainment. I can't sugarcoat genocide. And yes, I read my speeches because it's a lot of material and I want to make sure that I'm heard loud and clear. And so with that being said, I'm going to continue um, what I've uh, spoke about last night. And um, again, I pray that my listeners my group members and everybody that's on my friends list would get on board and be a part of this film project. Don't wait till I'm dead and gone to try to, um, you know, uh, use the vision and, and my uh, plan to help improve our situation. Work with me while I'm alive. 30 years I have been on the front lines. I've been reaching out to a lot of people here in my own city and since I don't have um, much capital, I have, I'm have i on a um, shoestring budget, they don't want to work with me. That's all that is. But once I start making money in this organization, everybody's going to want to be a part of that. But that would be too late because all that unnecessary rejection has been a thorn in my flesh. And I want to make sure that none of my members would never have to endure what I had to experience just to try to do something positive in the black community. With that being said, um, here's what I uh, was talking about yesterday. And unfortunately, like I say, um, I was unable to upload it. But uh, here's what I was talking about. Welcome, family, to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share this video podcast and hit the like button. This video podcast is available in three forms. Audio, 
video and as a written text in order for us to reach our audience. I cite all of my sources on my medium transcript under show and prove. I provide my medium transcript on my Facebook page. I encourage my listeners to click on the link to my current medium transcript so that you can read my store my sources in real time and respond when we open up the conversation for Q and A. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social group by giving black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services. I give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and ordinary law abiding citizens, an opportunity to share their special talents and skills to my listeners from around the globe. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcast and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue during COVID-19. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships, grants, housing, and legal services all for free. I created GRCAM, the Grassroots Community Activist Movement, on November 11th of 1991 on a site called Gopher in order to connect with other like-minded black people, African people, our brothers and sisters from the Caribbean and Brazil who are serious about solving black issues in America and solving African issues on the continent. I believe this new technology called the internet would help connect us together so that we can do great things on a domestic front and on an international front. After 15 years of being overlooked and rejected by established black organizations who are funded by the financial elites, I decided to write and publish my story. Quote, the solution for black America. Claiming, rebuilding, and restoring the urban ghettos in America. In the book, I explain what I experienced when I did my street ministry. I wrote the vision and made it plain in my revised book, yet my book is still not on the bestsellers list. I decided to take my story to the next level by turning my revised book into a docudrama entitled Hood Liberator Made in Chicago, The War Against Willie Lynch Begins. This film is based on my revised book. We focus on my childhood experience struggling to beat the odds as I navigate my way out of being illegally taken out of my home and tossed into the foster care system and in a group in a child children's group home. My experience as a teenager being returned to the inner city of Chicago and developing survival skills in an urban war zone. My experience doing street ministry and later creating a new black movement in America for young adults and black youth. All products of extreme abuse, violence, and drug infested childhood. The film offers a sensitive and intimate look into my experience with the Illinois foster care system, my determination and, and inspiration to separate myself from the status quo and desire to find purpose in life. Our second film would take place somewhere in South Africa and is entitled African Liberator, Battle Against Colonized Mindset. This film would deal with how the colonized mindset is based on an internalized attitude of feeling culturally inferior to European culture as a result of colonization. I believe that storytelling is one of the most powerful and effective ways to cap captivate a better world. It is my objective to generate content and connect the black community with the global African family and influence social change at the grassroots level. I don't want to just bring awareness with my films, but create real change at the grassroots level. Our objective is to take the lead in solving black issues in America starting in Chicago by strengthening the black family that want more out of life and for their children while improving the black community to give our black youth the greatest opportunity to thrive. My film project is my last attempt to try to do something positive for my racial group in America. This is what I want to be remembered for, trying to do something rather than just complaining about the issues. I am here to solve them, if given a chance. People who 
will join our film project will go down into history with me and Sister Renee. Just like Amazon, who started off online selling books, to now setting up fulfillment centers around the globe, Gracam is trying to turn our virtual Christian socialist organization into a real business starting in Chicago. I am called to create a new system that will focus on eradicating urban violence in Chicago through arts, culture, commerce, and spiritual development through my Christian business called Gracayo Chicago, which is the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. In order for me to do that, I have to focus on getting our film project fully funded and made. The proceeds from the film will put me in a better position financially to hire qualified black middle class professionals who will make sure our business is effective and successful for years to come. The proceeds from the film would also help me to purchase property in Chicago, Africa, the Caribbean, and in Brazil. Everything which I have written in my revised book, we will carry out to the fullest. My revised book is the foundation of my Christian business. So far, we have raised $1,000. Our goal is to raise $500,000 so that I can be in a better position financially to hire a professional black production company and quality black actors. We have applied for grants, but so far we have received nothing. Without support from the black grassroots and the global African family, I am unable to do my job. I will continue to use my show every Sunday to raise funds for our film project until we reach our goal. I'm calling on all my Christian group members and Light of the World Inspirational Group and Christian Spoken Word Network to pray that God would connect me with people who have the means to support our film project in Jesus Yahshua's name. Pray that my revised book will get on the bestsellers list in Jesus Yahshua's name. Pray that the Spirit of God would allow our Christian business to make a real impact and meet the need of our young black youth in Chicago in Jesus Joshua's name. I'm asking all of my Christian friends to step up and work with me in getting our film project fully funded and made this year in Jesus Joshua's name. If it was up to me, this Christian business would have been up and running years ago, but truth be told, many black people do not want a solution. So, so then... Black America would have embraced my my vision and my revised book would have been on the bestsellers list by now. The enemy think I was going to lay down and die. The devil is a liar. Once we raise the 500000 then I would hire a legitimate production company and quality actors. We will reach out to Amazon and Netflix, one of the world's two leading streaming services with 200, 214 million paid memberships and over 190 countries enjoying TV series, documentaries, feature films, and mobile games across a wide variety of genres and languages in order to reach the black masses and everyone else who want to be a part of this new 21st century black Christian movement. If you got any value from our content, then please consider supporting our film project in three ways. They are as follows. Through our virtual store. We provide merchandise such as COVID masks, coffee mugs, posters, handbag, and t-shirts. All proceeds will go towards our film project. Through our PayPal page, Kyle Chicago, Grassroots Community Activist Institute is a faith-based community advocacy organization. Our mission is to eradicate urban violence in Chicago through, through arts, culture, commerce, and spiritual development. Donations can be used as a tax write-off for U.S. citizens because this is a legitimate 501c3 nonprofit organization. Three, you could also support our film project by purchasing my revised book, um, The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Building, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, Second Edition, which is available on my Amazon author page. I provide each website on my medium transcript under Show and Proof. You can also find each website on my YouTube channel under About. If you are unable to participate on the show, no worries. When you have a moment, please watch my latest video podcast or listen to our audio podcast and leave a public comment in the comment section on my YouTube page or on my Facebook page about the topic. Please share my information with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. 
instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video podcast. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I would open up the phone lines through Facebook Messenger. This is called Side B. You can interact with me in real time either by voice call, by clicking on the phone icon, or by video call, by clicking on the camera icon. Our topic for today, gun violence increase across American cities. Adolf versus Gracam, part two. Democrats losing black support. Biden's first year in office and African top stories. Before we jump into the topic, I need to address something. Black millennials and Generation Z, this virtual Christian socialist organization is for you. Non-black sympathizers are welcome to join us, but before we allow guests into our space, we have to get our house in order. It's our responsibility to build this organization and to own it. Since Black America has rejected my vision and plan, to improve our communities for the past 30 years, this organization will be membership-based. Those who are not members, we will pray for them, show them tough love, and keep it moving. I don't have another 30 years to waste. Those of you who don't understand where we stand on spirituality, here's a brief overview of Gurkham's Christian component. The Grassroots Community Activist Movement is an interactive virtual Christian socialist organization. I use my Christian groups and my secular groups to network with my members on a global level. GERCAM is a a revolutionary 21st century kingdom building, global black unity, and black economic empowerment in order to solve our social problems within the black community and throughout the African diaspora. GERCAM is a Virtual Christian Socialist Organization. For me, Christian Socialism is an authentic form of Christianity. A Christian Socialist is a form of socialism based on the teachings of Jesus. Many Christian Socialists believe that capitalism is idolatrous and rooted in greed, social inequality, and institutionalized racism, which most Christian denominations consider a moral sin. We will focus on what we stand for, love, compassion, social justice, and liberation theology. Jesus told us to focus on the least of these in society, according to Matthew chapter 25, verse 35 through 40. He also commanded us to be witness to others, not just for us to read his word, but to activate social change in the world, according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20. We will be committed to the healing ministry of Jesus by showing compassion to inner city youth and their families which will promote dignity to the people and community we we serve. We will promote an authentic form of Christianity which is for me Christian socialism. We will emphasize the importance of morals and character character development for both Christians and non-Christians. We don't just focus We won't just focus on the pie in the sky, but also focus on meeting the need of the black community by offering services and programs which will strengthen the black family and solve black issues by promoting a black economic agenda. The CAM will focus on, focus in the area of economics, education, family, religion, entertainment, employment, media, and politics. The only thing which is preventing me from turning my virtual Christian social socialist organization into a real Christian business is the lack of manpower and capital. This is why I turned to social media to get my message out to the public through my YouTube videos, my social groups, my blog postings, my online talk show, my revised book, and now through my future urban Christian film. Returning back to the discussion, our first topic, gun violence increase across American cities. According to Fox News, U.S. murder hits 25-year high. Americans are concerned about the murder rate, assaults, and burglaries. Biden, in so many words, is telling the American people where, where law enforcement is concerned, Trump didn't go far enough. For 30 years, black America has rejected and overlooked my vision and plan to solve violence in Chicago. What has it proved? Listen to my Listen to black politicians who are in the pockets of the financial elite, have no vision nor a solution to solve these these issues in the black community 
black community because they are out of touch with our people. As a result, unnecessary murders of our black youth continues to increase. Shows like this is why black politicians are worried about worried because before the new black voices of media there was no alternative media to counter mainstream media with a significant number of people. Now we are in the information age and this new technology has allowed us to reach a global audience. To learn more, just scroll down to show and prove for video clips about the topic. Second topic, ADOS or ADOS versus GRICAM. Let's begin with what does ADOS mean. American Descendants of Slavery was founded by Antonio Moore and Yvette Carnell. ADOS focused on demanding reparations for slavery in the United States. Supporters of the ADOS movement said they should have their own racial category on census forms and college applications. It should not be lumped in with other black people, namely black African immigrants or black immigrants from the Caribbeans. At first, I saw this as being divisive among our brothers and sisters. I reached out to Antonio Moore to see if we could work together to help our people because after all, we, are, we were talking about the same issues the wealth gap between white America and black America. But he refused because he because he has a big ego. I later learned that Adolf was a front group for the Democrats. Once they started criticizing our legends like Dr. Claude Anderson, I had to draw the line and warn my group members not to support the, the Adolf movement. We have allowed, allowed for too long white supremacist sympathizers to undermine us from within. First, they start calling out Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. On, now they're turned to Dr. Claude Anderson, one of our legends. We got to make it clear that our icons are off limits. Dr. Claude Anderson is known for educating black people about the importance of having and owning our own business in order to create an economic base. Adolf wanted black people to vote Democrat down. They were trying to get black people to support baby bonds, which was Cory Booker's agenda, and accept a federal job guarantee. On my Medium transcript, I provide a PDF about Adolf's report entitled, quote, what we get, what we get wrong about closing the wealth the racial wealth gap, unquote. I encourage my listeners to go to my Medium transcript I provide on my Facebook Live event page under the comment section and click on the, the, the link. Read pages 4, 31, 33, and 34. According to the report, these unqualified scholars are telling us that black entrepreneurship don't work. Their suggestion to us is we need the federal government to employ us. It works for Asians, Latinos, Jews, and white people. If black entrepreneur if black entrepreneurship is not a solution, then why white supremacists forever targeting targeting black businesses? This ain't about reparation. This is about bait and switch. To me, it sounds like the people who wrote this report are financial failures and not entrepreneurs. Dr. Claude Anderson explained to us not to fall for trick language like minority or people of color. They must say black. What I got from this report is that racial is the new word for minority. My understanding from this report, they are telling us we all need to stay poor so that we can keep our property value low. When you read this report, it's not about helping black people, but rather minorities. Adolfs were sent out to sent out here to sell Bernie Sanders to black people. Antonio Moore wants to take credit for publishing this garbage. He is not involved in any that that is 
litigations for reparations. Yvette Cornell has very bad credit, yet they have the nerve to tell black people what's good for us. Now they have begun turning against each other. I ran across a tweet from Miss La Nifa Johnson. She said the following, quote, when people call themselves leaders and don't contribute anything to what, quote, Adolf is doing but want donations for a YouTube channel without doing anything specifically to better our chapter, that's a problem, unquote. In 2021, their video views have increased, have decreased, their support have abandoned them. This so-called black organization attempted to hijack a lineage and claimed they had the answers. The new black forces of media completely discredited them from the get-go. The so-called leaders of Adolf have gone on a campaign of attacking their own members publicly on Twitter. Everything from them is about a public beef for the purpose of getting an audience for viewership. The leaders don't want anything to do with black economic prosperity for the collective. They just want to pocket the money for themselves. Over here, Das, descendants of American slaves will always be about the interests of our group on a domestic front and insist on direct benefits specifically for our group from the American government that, owe, that owes us um, a blood debt. We are going to work together to make that happen. Adolf, the, pur the purpose, the, the supposed black organiza political organization is dead. It's nothing more than a gossip column on the internet. DAS will continue to fight for black, black Americans. We will organize with other like-minded black people and focus on getting things done. As we continue to have this Adolf's conversation and not include a plan to build in Africa, the Caribbean, and Brazil, but rather focus on just living in America is self-destruction in itself. As a collective, we don't have ownership of our community. Black people in America don't control any public policies. The leaders of Adolf still have not given black Americans a public apology for misleading black voters. Cam wants to take the lead in developing an international alliance with Africa, the Caribbean, and Brazil. Dr. King said, quote, I'm afraid that we have integrated into a burning house, unquote. The third topic, Democrats losing black support. The Democrats and the Biden administration are in trouble with black, black voters. The black grassroots are letting the Democrats know we're not going to continue voting for nothing anymore. Black people are finally getting on cold. If we don't get any tangibles, then we don't vote for them. Career politicians want to keep trying, tying us with this voting rights bill. Black politicians are, politicians are telling us we need to support it because it's named after John Lewis, an icon. Again, we're not going to play that game. We want tangibles. This political con game is about allowing illegal immigrants to vote without having an ID. We are the voting base for the Democratic Party. Biden only becomes senile when it comes to black people. He passed the Asian hate crime bill without any pushback. The Congressional Black Caucus co-signed the bill, but nothing for black people. The Biden administration signed Congressional Executive Orders for LGBT, Latinos, illegal immigrants, women, but nothing for black people. It's black voters' fault for allowing this to happen, despite warnings from the new black voices of media. Now we have to compete against newly arrived Afghans and illegal immigrants for resources, thanks to black voters. We cannot continue to allow other groups to get the resources from our tax dollars. The fourth topic. Biden's first year in office. In 2020, many blacks were doubting my political prediction about predictions. Today, nobody is doubting me or the new black voices of media. 
in November of 2020, I encourage my group members and listeners who reside in the United States to demand tangibles for our votes. I never waver. I never change my p- position. I have been consistent on what I, where I stand politically. All this time, Biden, Biden supporters have been telling, been saying, give him some time. Well, it's been a year. This is what I told my group members what would happen. According to ABC News, Biden's first year record on immigration, tough challenges, harsh criticisms. The buffer class are not happy and the buffer class strategy has failed. According to NBC News, Vimo's PayPal Cash App must report $600 or more in business transactions to the IRS. Starting January 1st, mobile money apps like Venmo, PayPal, Cash App must report annual commercial transactions of $600 or more to the IRS. The change to the tax code was signed into law as part of the American Rescue Plan Act, along with the COVID-19 response bill that was passed back in March. Notice how these politicians tell us that they can't get a Voting Rights Act passed, but they can make it legal for these money-changing services. They're focusing on these online money transfer services first before they start going after the banks. According to NBC News, black voters in South Carolina voice frustration with Biden's first year in office. We're not concerned about voting rights legislation and the mainstream media and the Democrats wants to make the focus about voting rights the issue for us is tangibles. We have the power to put the Democrats out of business. We don't need them. They need us. According to the Associated Press, black Democrats in South Carolina giving Biden mixed views. Mainstream media has been telling the public that black people are only concerned with voting rights and the John Lewis Act. Joe Biden has never been in support of defunding the the police. Instead, he prefers to give law enforcement more funding than Trump. Here's what they meant by other issues, according to the Associated Press. Senators, bipartisan police overhaul talks end with no deal. The Associated Press and the Democrat media outlets know full well what black people want and is not John Lewis Voting Act. Truth be told, John Lewis Voting Act is really about allowing illegal immigrants the right to vote without uh, an ID and to neutralize the black vote. This is a clear case of media propaganda to deceive black voters. Biden has only taken executive action for LGBT, Latinos, illegal immigrants, Asians, and women. Nothing for black people. I predict the Democrats will start telling the public that anyone who talks about reparation is woke, and being woke is not good a good thing in America because it divides us rather than unite us. They're going to start talking like the alt-right. Notice in the art- article how they keep using this trick language, black and the party's base interchangeably. They keep ignoring our concern that that's the political con game. Democrats want us to believe that their agenda is also the black agenda, to keep black people to continue voting for, for them. That's their strategy, to stay in power. I created this video podcast as a resource for the next generation so that they can have access to information and data because I don't know how long it would take for us to get our film project fully funded and made because that's up to the black grassroots and the global African family. There's nothing more that I can do. I'm praying and I'm just putting it in God's hands. There's a reason why Jewish people can help Israel because they have access to resources. 
we have to fix our problems before we can help anyone else. I have spent 30 years explaining to my group members and listeners what this organization is all about. I even published my revised book in order to generate capital so that we can move this organization to the next level. I have explained what makes this organization different from other black organizations. One of the hallmarks of having a media apparatus is that it has the ability to reach a global audience, and that's a good thing. The fifth topic, African Top Stories. Africa is the richest continent on the globe, and yet it is, it is home to the poorest people in the world. The question is why? Because of colonization and enslavement. The grassroots community activist movement aims to reconnect African diaspora with continental Africans in order for us to heal collective, collectively and develop the skills and strategies that will harness the resources we have to mobilize our people towards a vision for transformation and deliver the tr transformation that our continent urgently needs. That's why the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Africa is here to raise the bar in Black America, Africa, the Caribbean, and Brazil. My vision goes beyond Black America and applies to Africa, the Caribbean, and Brazil. I need my international friends from my African group, Rakai of Africa, to step up and contribute what you can to our film project. The battle is for Africa. The financial elites have all of their military bases there, from America, Europe, Indian, Arab, and Chinese. And yet, no African military is in their homeland. Africa has all of the world's natural resources. I am called to unite the African diaspora with continental Africans in order for us to solve our own issues on a domestic front and also on an international front. Through Kakao Chicago, we will both heal through those heal those of us whose ancestors were enslaved and Native Africans whose ancestors were colonized by foreign invaders from Europe. Africa will rise and return to her greatness and rule once again by its rightful owners, melanated people. I am call, calling upon our, all Grakam members henceforth to step up and work with me in getting our story on the big screen so that we can do what God has called us to do for our people worldwide. Here's the first top African story. Why is African immigrants in America so quiet about the Biden administration cutting a gota? I'm not sure if y'all are keeping up with what the Biden administration is doing in Africa, specifically with a gota which is African Growth Opportunities Act. This act allowed Amer America and African countries to trade back and forth tariff-free. The Biden administration has removed three Af African uh, countries, Mali, Guinea, and Ethiopia, from Egota. I'm not hearing any anything from our African immigrants' family about what they are doing. You can't blame this on Trump. Trump was wrong for making his comments about African countries, but that was just rhetoric. Obama and Hillary Clinton, now Biden and Kamala Harris, they are turning their rhetoric into action, which is more dangerous. It appears that African immigrants care about the well-being of America than what's happening on the African continent. I'm just saddened that our African immigrant family is so quiet about this issue. To learn more about this topic, please read up on Egota. I provide information about it on my Medium transcript. The next topic, um, I don't have, this is more, of, more so of a video, so I'm just going to, uh, explain the video um, is by Wenzel 
she's from the African Diaspora News Channel. And so she's given a report about, um, I would say, uh, like gay, gay couples, I could just say European uh, gay couples are coming to Africa trying to change African laws. So, you know, that's not cool. It's, you know, it's not the other way around. You know, African nations going to European countries trying to change their laws. But again, you know, this is what happens when uh, our people don't aren't on code, basically. So they want to push the uh, gay agenda in Africa. Yet, they don't care about pushing for... Um, Reparations, you know, because um, it was the Europeans that colonized uh, Africa, and so Africa deserves um, reparations for being uh, colonized. And those of us that have ancestors that have been enslaved, we have to keep pushing for uh, reparations for that, because they stole all the wealth. That's the only reason why they, you know, are so, you know, on top financially. That's not cool. And again, that's the financial elites um, that has done that. Um, then there's another topic. Um, it's a video, um, again, by Wanzel from the African Diaspora News Channel. And she talks about the outrage in Ghana as a Chinese man. Um, you know, he shoots an eight, eight-year-old boy. And that's not cool. You don't hear about Africans um, in China shooting, you know, Chinese uh, children. But again, th there's that double standard and disrespect. And all of re the only reason this stuff is happening is because uh, African people and black people, we're not on code. And so long as we're not on code, um, I would say non-black foreigners are going to continue to go to Africa and, you know, act a fool. And do stuff like this. But I'm glad that person was arrested. But I hope that he uh, does some, uh, be sentenced and do some harsh uh, jail time for that. Because again, if an African um, did that to a um, Chinese child in China, believe me, um, there will be swift action. So, you know, we got to stop this double standard. You know? Okay, with that being said, I'm going to um, open up the phone lines and, you know, I want my callers to, um, you know, if you're going to call in, make sure that you watch my video podcast first or listen to my um, audio podcast so that way you'll know what we're doing. And I really recommend that you go through my um, medium transcript so that way you can... Um, interact, you, you know, you have access to all my um, cited sources, and, you know, you can read that stuff for yourself, okay? Again, the whole reason I'm doing all of this stuff is because I'm trying to raise um, funds for our film project. Give whatever you can through our PayPal page, or purchase our revised book, or purchase items from our virtual store. This is all that I have. Again, I'm, I want to move this organization from behind the computer, but again, it takes a team to make a dream work. doesn't matter how bad I want it. But again, at least I'm documenting what I'm doing. I'm doing my part. I'm doing the best that I can. And I'm using this technology wisely and trying to share the knowledge that I have with those who will participate. Okay, with that being said, the phone lines are now open.